This is Twit. Now, uh, Lexi, do you do betas on your iPhone? Uh, not my personal one, but ones we have at work, yes. So, so we have the uh, developer on it. 13.2. Oh, well, on my personal phone, is, is uh, my work phone is an iPhone 10, so I can't make use of Deep Fusion because it needs a 13 Bionic. Oh. So, I know, but we have we have plenty of, of the I am so tempted. <laughs> You're right, a sweater. Yeah, see? I, well, this is an, that's an Apple pic- This is an Apple picture. Here's another yeah, one. They're Apple all picture. sweaters. Oh, good grief. All of them. Well, <laughs> this is a GQ catalog or something? Yes. <laughs> so I'll explain what's going on, and then you'll understand why the sweaters. You know, Lexi, but I'll tell everybody else. So uh, Deep Fusion is software that makes your already good cameras on the new iPhone Pros and uh, iPhone 11 better with artificial with machine learning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not sure. Sh- I'm not sure why Apple didn't put it on the phone when it came out. It's going to be part of 13.2. I have a little theory, though. You want to hear my theory, Lexi? Yeah, you can tell yeah. me if I'm crazy. You know that in nine days, Google's going to announce its Pixel Four, right? The other phone with the camera that could conceivably rival the iPhone 11. Usually, my does. theory is. Apple's, I bet you they don't release Deep Fusion until after that. They're going to see what the Pixel's doing with the Pixel 4, right? I, I think that's a very valid theory. And then maybe do some tweaks behind the scenes exactly. and go, look, well, look, if You've- Google pulls out the sweater pictures during the <laughs> keynote, then we'll know that something's up. There is a sweater conspiracy. <laughs> to some degree, what Deep Fusion does is very similar to what Google did last time with the Pixel 3. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does require the A13 chip because there is a machine learning coprocessor in there that uses that. Uh, what Deep Fusion does is it takes a bunch of images, just like a- a Google did on uh, its Pixel 3. Um, but but it u- I'll tell you how it uses the machine learning. So uh, what happens is it shoots before you even press the, the button... I believe, I'm not, I, this is Matthew Panzerino's article in which he, he talked to Apple and they explained it. The camera shoots a short frame at a negative EV, in other words, underexposed, mm-hmm. it's dark, and then pulls sharpness from that frame. You're the photographer, and you can That's explain correct. why that works. It then shoots three more at what it thinks is the right exposure, EV zero. And this is in milliseconds. Oh yeah, this is all <laughs> virtually simultaneous. Mm-hmm. And then along... EV plus frame, which is overexposed. Overexposing it. Then it registers alignment and blends these. So what is that? That's seven, uh, how many? It's a lot of frames. It's mm-hmm. five, five images. This produces two 12 megapixel photos, which are then combined into one result photo using four separate neural networks, each of which understands subject matter. Mm-hmm. I think that... If you read between the lines, there's a sweater neural network. <laughs> there is. There's a sweater one. There's a there's a sky one. There's a hair one. There's a backdrop one. All the all of these are the different elements that mm-hmm. Apple says that can be identified through Deep Fusion. And so it, it does a different adjustment depending on the material. So it says, "Oh, that's sky. I'm going to do this." But it's still the so whole it's like process what you of, do with Photoshop it, it's by the, hand. You're dealing mm-hmm. with with frequency separation, and essentially, with when you have that overexposed, you get into tones, and that underexposed is helping to give you that texture, and you meld it together. So that's what is, all photographers are doing in the end in post processing mm-hmm. is figuring out the perfect balance between sharpness and clarity versus tone, and mixing it together. And if you think about it, that's what Google did with the Pixel Three, mm-hmm. because Not the problem is. Not always say, successfully. My floating cow. They, yeah, I, I remember know. that. I remember that. You know, yeah. but again, it's, yeah. it's still a pretty good job to do it on the fly. Yeah. In milliseconds. Just, you, just using yeah. the, um, yeah, just using the, the, the native processing of the camera is, uh, I'll stick it in the forum, but the, um, I just, I, I love the Pixel 3 camera. I think it's great. I've, I've got a 3A. I'm, I'm looking forward to the announcement. I'm hoping there's a 4A eh? because that's What's nice. What's the date? Right. August 25th. The yeah. floating cow on the Ian Thompson. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's. I get worried about all this sort of pre manipulation of images. And and I. it'd be nice if you could just turn it off completely. Well, you can. Try you it can out. get the raw, right? You can shoot in raw. Just put okay. a third party app because Apple doesn't allow you to Halide. access the. Yeah, Halide, there's a lot of other ones too that are good. Just the, the pulling out. Halide gives you access to raw. 
No. Uh, and as a result, you could, if you don't like what Apple's doing, I guess, here is the problem <laughs> floating cow <laughs> with yes. AI wow. when it comes to... So this cow is not floating, Ian, I take it. He's actually... A, I, saw, I saw many things in on my Scottish holiday, but floating cows was not one of them. You I know? like how shaggy the Scottish cows are. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, they're actual total sweethearts as well, because they've got these huge, sharp, pointy horns, and it's just So you're telling me this much. cow was on the grass? Exactly. It was on the grass. I have video evidence from the dash cam. <laughs> People refuse to believe it. They call it fake moose. And it's fake moose. Like, <laughs> So it you're right. I mean, nice. it could go it could go his, hilariously wrong, mm. but I think it does look like Apple have got a pretty good um, a, pr a pretty good way of going about it. But I mean, how much are they going to break down these neural networks into individual? Th I mean, is it just going to be sky, ground, landscape? They surely can't do one for every item of clothing, and not just sweaters. But it's um... a sweater is a good baseline to work with though mm. clothing yeah. has a fine mm -hmm. uh you have texture weave. Yeah. there's texture in it yeah it's but hard to do also what apple's doing is actually quite interesting because they're covering like the whole gamut of light so they have different modes essentially that can deal with the different lighting conditions mm -hmm. so as photographers like when you go out and take a photo you know you have you know in your brain you have to change the exposure you have to work out sort of the levels of light that you need to deal with mm -hmm. whereas on the iphone camera it's so it has smart hdr for sort of like general lighting conditions mm -hmm. which is just HDR, blending exposures together. Then there's deep fusion for those medium kind of light conditions indoors. So that's where you kind of need to work out texture, sharpness, detail, things like that. And then for the really low light situations, there's night, night. mode. So they've covered everything in that one scope. But I think the most interesting part about how Apple does it is that yeah, for geeks like us, we talk about, you know, how these modes work and what they're called. But I think for most people that just pick up the camera, they're just going to see the end result, which that's is, the beauty you know, which it. is the beauty. And they don't know anything of this stuff that's happening behind the scenes. So, yeah, I mean, this is just something that photographers have been doing for a while. It's just now been, you know, done through machine learning. We don't need to It's more mainstream. But, yeah, but absolutely. The, the problem, of course, is that the camera phones have crappy pickups, Crappy sensors are tiny. Tiny sensors, crappy, not crappy, plastic. just tiny. Well, <laughs> tiny could be crappy because mm -hmm. they, you know, they don't capture a lot. Less information. Uh, if you saw the raw image, the really the raw image mm -hmm. from most camera phones, it's not good. All right, mm -hmm. right. It's well, distorted. It's neither from a DSLR though. They well, that's a good look, point. They don't look good mm -hmm. when you take them out of the camera. You're like, ugh. Ugh. That looks sad. That was yeah. bad. <laughs> uh, so I, it's I, it's kind of a. By the way, all of that. All of those images, all that happens in under a second. Um, if you go on Reddit, there people have been posting images, not Apple images, mm -hmm. so there's no sweater in this, <laughs> but there is a lovely little bulldog. And uh, I would point to the hair on the guy's right arm, Yep. where there's a lot more detail. Look at the uh, the dog itself. I, You know, it's a subtle difference. It's probably not a difference where you'll go, oh, that's a deep fusion shot. But honestly, the one on the left is without, the one on the right is with. I honestly think the every deep fusion shot I've seen is more pleasant. Does that make hmm. sense? It's Sometimes they call it image the quality, I IQ. Right. I think mm -hmm. the IQ is better. So the, arm, th the arm, arm hair thing on that was weird because he seemed to have much more hairy arms than the second shot. <laughs> well, what, okay, well, yeah, I'll tell that's, you what's going on here. It's under, yeah, it's also mm. underexposed on the first shot. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. And so they have more, whoops, they have more information. Mm -hmm. Carson's, yes, Carson's you zooming are. in. They have more information in the second shot. It's the same photo, mm. I think. I mean, I have to assume it it's not like exactly it the same yeah. photo, but they, t mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's tricky to do. You can't turn it on and off. There's no deep no, fusion switch. It just happens behind the scenes. And, you know, we've done a couple of comparisons too with the developer beta and it does look it does look sharper, even at a reduced magnification. But it's it's only it's very subtle and you would never know unless you put the shot side by side with the, with without deep fusion, essentially. It's still, I think a, it's still a great advantage, though. Here's a close up, a kind of shots. a one to one mm. of fabric. And uh, even the color seems to be a little different in Deep Fusion, but certainly the detail is much improved. Mm -hmm. And that's not, not just sharpening uh, or unsharpening. Right. That's that's mm -hmm. really something else. Computational. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels computational. computational. Yeah. And the thing is, you, you, you said you believe they're just waiting around to see what happens with Google's announcement. This isn't the first time this happened. This is 
pretty common in the Apple way of doing things. Think back to all of the, the other features built inside of iOS over the last couple of years. You know, how many times have you seen uh, WWDC pop up and all of the Android yeah. fanboys say, oh, we already got that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, well, Apple says, yeah, you already got it, but we want to make it a little bit better for our users. You know, so what's the difference here? It's very yeah. much Apple's play. I mean, they weren't the yeah. first to the smartphone market. They weren't the first to the media player well, market. A, a little different because they, you're waiting to see what the competitor does, yeah. and then the yeah. next day you're going, oh, good, okay, let's turn yeah. let's fix that. <laughs> if you got the resources, that's business one-on-one. Hey, yeah. I can do Oh, it's good for us, right? Yeah. Because this competition between Apple and Google is mm -hmm. fantastic. It means yeah. we get better and better camera phones. Here's another image. This is Pixel 3 on the left, Deep Fusion on the right. Dramatic much difference. Tones, much much clarity. better tones. Dramatic difference. I think, though, the interesting thing with all of these camera comparisons is so much of it does come down to personal preference. That's true. You know, so you can look at the image on the left and say, well, yeah, I mean, I prefer it because Could, it's slightly flatter. It looks more natural, maybe? It looks maybe? more natural. The mm. one on the right looks like there's a sort of an extra light source perhaps coming from, you know, the top. It just looks a little bit oversaturated, maybe. I mean, it, yeah. again, like you can pull these apart until the cows come home, That's really. True. That's true. Really. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, if you say which one I prefer, I say, well, actually... From that example, I think I want the, the you one like on the, the left. left. One. You I do, think so, yeah. Actually, I'm kind of. I just this looks more natural. Also, I, with the right one, look at the the, the lower the left hand side. It looks like, as you say, there's another light source in there light, lighting up the lowered arm. Yeah. yeah, it's like, do you? I mean, <laughs> for some situations, absolutely, you value that extra detail. But some other situations, it's like. A photo is a photo, mm -hmm. right? And if it captures the memory, which is what most people are using their phones to capture, then that's all that matters. Yeah, it's definitely it? something the common folks could care less about. Does well, this thing work? That's all they want. Well, <laughs> and what you can say now, which is true, any flagship phone is going to give you a great camera. Yes. yes. Right? Just right off the bat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apple didn't even mention the fact that an iPhone is a phone in its announcement. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on the camera, but not no time, zero time. <laughs> Microsoft didn't mention theirs. You're young, either. Lexi. Do you still make phone calls? Of course I make phone calls. Oh, okay. Yeah. Through Skype? Through, no, no. <laughs> Through the actual telephone. I, oh. I remember the day of the phones. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I even remember beepers. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I was very young, but I remember they existed. <laughs> you know, I was there. <laughs>